Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for the entire team for giving this opportunity to be presenting over here at Vitus Nation 2023. Uh, this is interesting. My first ever uh, talk at a view a specific conference, so I'm really excited for this. Uh, so my talk is going to be making uh, next generation view based machine learning applications with the help of TensorFlow.js. So how you can integrate machine learning inside of your view applications very easily without having to really know what machine learning is all about. Uh, a very quick introduction about myself. I'm Shivaya Mertens for JSSIC and Working Group Lead uh, from India. And I've also been a Google Summer of Code mentor uh, uh, for TensorFlow, which is an open source machine learning mentorship program by Google. So without wasting any further time, let's first understand what exactly is TensorFlow.js. So TensorFlow.js is an open source machine learning library that is particularly uh, developed for JavaScript, which allows you to have pre-trained models, uh, pre-trained machine learning models that you can directly integrate inside of your JavaScript applications. Now, one may ask that why is there a need for machine learning in JavaScript? Typically, you associate machine learning with uh, programming languages like R or Python. And uh, JavaScript developers might uh, might question that how can they also uh, utilize machine learning models to create really intuitive applications without having to, let's say, learn additional languages in Python. Uh, that's the reason why TensorFlow.js uh, got created. Now, we also know that JavaScript is a very versatile language. And that means that since JavaScript can run on your browsers, on the server, on mobile applications, on desktop, or even on IoT-based applications, that means that you can bring the capability of machine learning to all these different platforms. According to most of the Stack Overflow de developer service, JavaScript is one of the most uh, popular programming languages. And especially when you uh, use uh, the different types of frameworks like Vue. Uh, there are so many developers who can benefit by integrating machine learning models inside of their Vue applications. And that's why we'll understand how you can actually do that. So the TensorFlow.js library allows you to primarily do it in three different ways. The first one is by running existing models. So these are pre-trained models that you can directly just integrate inside of your application. And by using a few different functions, including dot .predict, you can get machine learning predictions and uh, use them inside of your view application. The other one that you can use are the retraining models with the help of uh, transfer learning. These are pre-existing models that you retrain over your own data set and then uh, make them or tweak them to make them more uh, available for your own data set. And finally, you can directly write machine learning models in JavaScript with the help of the ops and the layers API. These are low level APIs that allow you to write your custom machine learning code directly in JavaScript, and then you can integrate them. Now, the way that TensorFlow.js works is that you can either integrate it on the front end or on the back end. And when I say the front end, that means the browser. That means that allows you to run machine learning models directly on the browser itself and uh, without having to worry too much about having a dedicated server where you might be running your machine learning models. So uh, the way that you can approach by being able to run your machine learning models directly on the browser is uh, by using the uh, browser-based APIs and uh, the node modules that are specifically uh, uh, using for the uh, browser-based. And you can use a bunch of different uh, backends. And when I say these backends, these essentially means that they're not like uh, backend servers, but instead you can use things like uh, Wasm, WebGL. These are technologies that allow you to make your machine learning inference or machine learning uh, performance much better as compared to, let's say, if you were just running your machine learning models uh, from your CPU. So for larger models or for faster processing, you can use them. Or you can also, of course, run these models on the server side. But the biggest reason why you may want to go ahead and run your uh, TensorFlow-based models or machine learning models on view is primarily with uh, the five major reasons. And again, these are where you cannot really achieve these with the help of a server side. So uh, biggest one is privacy because these models are directly running on the browser itself. That means that uh, you're not actually sending any of your data or processing on a remote server. All of these things are happening directly on the browser itself. And since there is no server, you have lower latency because everything happens on your device itself. So on device uh, is where the execution basically takes place. And of course, you're also saving cost because you're not running these models on a dedicated server. And if you compare the performance of, let's say, being able to run these machine learning models with the help of JavaScript as compared to Python, uh, you can see that in a lot of the different types of machine learning models, the performance that you get with the help of JavaScript is actually better as compared to even Python, which is generally considered to be a much more um, 
dedicated uh, language for being able to run machine learning applications so this these are some of the biggest benefits that allow any javascript developer any view developer to integrate machine learning applications in their uh, applications and make really meaningful really intuitive applications that are po possible to make now uh, the demo that i'll be showing is uh, with the help of the pre trained models so if you go to tensorflow.org/js/models these are all the pre trained models that you can directly integrate in your application uh, the one that we'll specifically look at today is the coco ssd model which is essentially an object detection model where if you upload an image or you might use let's say your webcam uh, to detect a frame and it will try to detect some of the pre trained uh, classes or objects that the machine learning model can detect as you can see in this example we have image of dog and the machine learning model can uh, uniquely identify the dogs in the image and create like this bounding box that you can see so idea is pretty simple that you load an image you load the machine learning model which in this case is the coco ssd model and you get the prediction with it uh, now of course if you want to integrate uh, these machine learning models or tensorflow js with view first you will have to install the necessary packages so this includes the core tensorflow itself and then the corresponding machine learning models so in this case uh, since we are going to be using the coco ssd model you will be installing them and then once you install these packages you will be importing these packages inside of your view component now if you understand that how does this entire integration kind of work so ideally what we are doing is that we are utilizing the view 3 composition api where we import our reference from view and inside of our setup function we are essentially creating the image ref and we are uh, going ahead and uh, adding the results the model and also the images that we are going to be using so idea is that once you load your image uh, you will call your uh, model and you will wait for your model to load and once you load your model you will pass the image as the input inside of your model the model will Uh, result in some predictions that you'll get and you'll be exposing those predictions and you can utilize those predictions uh for whatever you want to do in this case like we'll be logging our prediction in terms of like what exactly is the detection that we get inside of our application so it's pretty straightforward that you simply just in import the necessary package you uh use the function cocosd.load to load the actual model and then use the model.detect uh, inside of your image to detect the predictions and once you uh, get the predictions you output them and uh, of course in this case the example that i'll also be showing is uh, you can use your webcam to take a photo and then pass that image stream uh, to your model again and be able to render the predictions so with that in mind let's quick uh, quickly take a look at the actual uh, development itself so over here this is my entire code so uh, this is the object detection dot view so i have a component i have uh, created a view component and in this as i already mentioned that uh, what i'm doing is that um in side of this first uh, component where i have defined my component this is my setup function and this setup function essentially uh, is bringing in uh, the video ref and because like that's from where we'll be capturing our image and this function detect is probably the most important function where we are actually loading our machine learning model and using it to detect uh, the image and load our predictions and once we go ahead and do that then of course we uh, simply use the canvas in order to generate a bounding box that basically detects what exactly is there in that particular image and uh, then i just import this particular uh, this particular uh, component inside of my template and you can see over here that i have added the object detection component inside of my app template and then i run this so i'll go ahead and uh, showcase how this demo is looking so over here now before we do this object detection with the help of the camera first i have already inserted one image in this case it's an image of a scissor so and you can see over here that i have this detect object uh, button so if i go ahead and click on this you can see that it basically uh, detects the answer or the result as a scissor so ultimately what's happening is that once you pass this image inside of your machine learning model it detects the uh, image as a scissor now what i'll do is in the next demo i will open my camera as well so as you can see that it has started to uh, show my uh, screen and i'll take a snapshot of this and try to detect what is there so as you can see that as i took this camera and it detected it took one of the frames and it passed this frame as the image inside of our model and it predicted the result as a person so within like let's say if i go back to my object dot detection uh, code it's literally within the number of steps from line number 56 to line number 62 
we were able to integrate a machine learning model inside of our view application and build a very intuitive object detection uh, model now of course if you go to the tensorflow.js.org/models there are so many other types of pre trained models that you can actually use so whether it's things like uh, being able to do object detection image recognition or even things like nlp uh, things like being able to create your own ai chatbot uh, you can do all of that with the help of tensorflow js and integrate those within your view js applications to create ai powered web applications and without having to know much about machine learning itself so the biggest benefit of using these libraries is that you don't need to be an mathematical expert or a machine learning expert but yet you can still uh, create a lot of different ai based applications uh, like you know we have so much of uh, applications today using chat gpt and like uh, gpt3 open ai uh, and you can also integrate all of those applications inside of your view uh, applications very easily as i showed you in today's uh, lightning talk but again if you found this uh, talk to be intuitive uh, feel free to connect with me on my twitter at @hardwarup and i'll also be sharing uh, the code uh, the code for this particular uh, demo right after my talk so i'll be sharing the github link and you can uh, connect with me on my github as well now i'll be open to questions thank you so much Thank you, thank you. And definitely interested in seeing all of that. So thank you for offering to post it. Now, the first question, which I'm just enjoying asking everybody this and what people are saying on the um, poll on Twitter of what platform do you use operating system? Windows, yeah. Mac, Linux? So I was pretty much a, a Windows boy since my childhood because i started using uh, uh, computers at the age of 4 and from the age of 4 till the age of 22 when i graduated from college i was just a mac uh, just a windows user and and of course like you know from our previous speakers uh, like i switched over to mac when i started to work because of course i couldn't really afford buying mac computers and i think like but now mac computers also have become so powerful and they are definitely a lot more affordable for a lot of people and uh, in case like you are still wanting to use like let's say mac os linux or windows today the the general ecosystem for interoperability is so nice so even if you're let's say a windows user you can um, integrate uh, linux applications by using uh, wsl which is like windows for sub sub system linux or like let's say in case you were to uh, still use a mac os system uh, you could use some ec2 instance from aws or from other cloud provider and still be able to use them so it's a lot more easier now to uh, use these operating systems even though you might not have the dedicated hardware to be able to run them okay i appreciate that because we're definitely uh since since the last um guess we have gone down to 64% mac and linux has gone up so they yeah. it is starting to change and i'm pretty excited about that i think like the only the one area where linux really shines is the developer tool chains that uh, is supported in linux so if you take a look at uh, not your uh, temp contemporary software like most of the web applications but if you're looking at more of the low level system applications uh, generally the way that these open source projects are started are by only integrating them with linux so if you try to run them on windows or on mac they won't run uh, so a lot of times what i have to do is i have to spin up a docker container uh, for running my uh, like you know linux application and then i run whatever i want to run so i think generally the way that software developers or like core software developers generally prefer to use linux and then later on they add support for windows or for mac okay that is good to know too yeah. um how do you keep your model up to date over time that's a really good question so i think like this basically comes from the fact that uh, once your model has been trained and you put it into production uh, generally of course the model will remain the constant right and especially when you're utilizing let's say when you are smaller models uh these models are optimized to such an extent that you don't really need to keep your model up to date as such um whenever like let's say you might want to update your model you will make the changes in your model and then you'll deploy it to production now of course uh, there is an entire concept of ml ops which basically means that once you push your models into production um whenever you're uh, like you know training your machine learning models you're training them on a very limited data set and once you make them into production and you push them into production that's when you basically realize that there are so many uh, unexpected inputs uh, from the uh, broader audience who might be uh, utilizing your model that your model starts to fail right so that's where you have to continuously monitor uh, the performance of your model and all of this basically comes under the uh, umbrella of a terminology called model serving where we 
push the model into production they we evaluate the model performance over time and then as uh, you you see that if the model performance is degrading you can make relevant changes in your machine learning model and then push them into production and uh, the beauty of this pre trained models is that of course this um, is that you can directly just go ahead and utilize these models uh, directly for your own use case now of course uh, in case you have a very custom data set you could use the uh, the transfer learning based machine learning model approach again that's supported with tensorflow js where you can update the model based on your on your data on your own data right so is that uh, if you see that the performance of your model is degrading you could retrain your model based on certain parameters which you feel were lacking in the first iteration and then just go ahead and deploy it but there are different tools using which you can monitor uh, there are observability tools like prometheus again this goes a bit beyond the scope of today's conference but like you know uh, evaluating a model is very important especially if you are util utilizing it for production use cases so you, you can go into these topics of observability model serving in case you are interested I feel like we just gave you ideas of more talks for you to give. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right. Next question: Can someone use uh, TensorFlow.js in a Next application? Absolutely. And again, the beauty is that in case, as I showed you, that you just have to install those necessary packages, which is basically the TensorFlow.js core, and then any supporting uh, uh, model package as well so i use coco ssd you can use any other such uh, model uh, npm module as well so as long as you are using a javascript or a typescript application and whether you use any other framework right even apart from next uh, sorry not next uh, view right so whether you use nuxt or you use view like uh, it will be supported in all of these different uh, frameworks very cool. And last question: Are there any gotchas to using TensorFlow.js in a Vue.js application? Yeah. So I would say that in, if you are uh, really considering performance, uh, one thing that I showcased was that uh, you can basically configure your model itself by utilizing either, like, let's say, uh, if you're using just the model itself um, and you're running it, you can use your CPU. But instead. If you want to make your model performance uh, better, you can use the supported backends uh, for your machine learning uh, model. Now, when I say that these are backends, that doesn't mean that we are having a dedicated server. These are directly utilizing uh, the browser-based APIs, and your browser directly can interact with your uh, system, right? So, whether if you are using a GPU or a CPU or WebAssembly or WebGL, these are all browser-based technologies that allow for faster processing. Uh, you can utilize the browser-based APIs to directly interact with your uh, system resources, that's your CPU or GPU, and make the model inference performance faster. So uh, within TensorFlow.js, you can either use TensorFlow.js Node, TensorFlow.js GPU, uh, TensorFlow.js Wasm, TensorFlow.js WebGL, and these will help to make the inference faster for you inside of your Vue.js application. Thank you. Thank you. And as a reminder to everyone, uh, both of us have our Twitter handles on yeah. our uh, titles. So make sure to go catch the uh, code and presentation from Shivai. And this is where you can contribute to on my Twitter for the uh, poll if whatever operating system you use. And thank you, Shivai, for joining us today. Thank you so much. It is really a wonderful time for me. And I'm super excited to be presenting at future conferences as well for Vue.js Nation.